This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Uh, I hope I made it clear yesterday. I mean, yesterday we went through all the bits of performance measurement uh, that you need. Financial, non-financial, divisionalization, and although very quickly for the reasons I said, not for profit. Uh, but uh, it's virtually certain to be most, not all, but most of one of the two compulsory questions. I said I'd give you the one from last time, and I will. Uh, but last time was no exception. But certainly most of one of the compulsory and usually, and almost certainly, most of one of the choice questions of 20 marks as well. Um, so it is a substantial chunk of the syllabus. It will be astonishing if it isn't this time. All right? Uh, you know, again, last time, one choice question, 20 marks, which was not for profit, and most of uh, one of the compulsories. Uh, but also, I hope I made clear that although clearly there are bits of learning, you know, in terms of uh, Fitzgerald and Moon, Kaplan and Norton, that sort of thing, EVA, uh, a huge amount of that is essentially writing. You know, I'm not going to repeat everything, but I hope I said enough. You know, the financial one, uh, although there are numbers to back up your discussion. Uh, it's usually a writer report, and most of it is writing about, you know, are things going up, are they going down, and particularly suggesting reasons why uh, this is going up or why this is going down. Okay? Anyway, I'm not going to say more. Obviously, I said yesterday on the revision, I'll give you loads of them, the different way it's been asked. Um, but it just has to be there. Okay? Uh, I said also, though, today was going to be very much a numbers day, uh, that the, uh, the other of the two compulsory is always, again, not entirely, but always a fair bit of numbers as opposed to writing, and bits of certainly two of the compulsory. And here, now then, I said yesterday, in theory... They can ask anything that was in paper F5, or whatever you did that was equivalent to F5. Uh, but in theory, they can ask any of the numbers from F5. There's just the blanket line in the syllabus. Everything in F5 is examinable. Except, as I said, they won't actually ask variance analysis. Uh, and I could quite happily spend the whole of today and tomorrow going through everything in F5, but I'll be cheating you uh, for two reasons. One reason is that although in theory you could ask anything, uh, in practice there are really only four areas from F5 that have ever been asked or ever likely to ask in terms of, uh, I'm talking about the numbers and the techniques and the learning, you know? Um, and the four areas, I'll tell you what they are. Um, whether you've heard of it or not because of past exams, um, activity-based costing. Certainly that's appeared several times, usually as a very tiny bit of a much bigger question. Uh, usually any arithmetic, I say, forgive me if you haven't done it before, but I think you four all have. Um, usually, as I say, it's been a very small bit of a much bigger question. Uh, and therefore not that many marks, uh, and actually easier than F5, but as I say, it's only been a little bit of much more. Um, it has been asked several times. Uh, the chances this time actually are very tiny because um, there was a full choice question on activity-based costing last time. All right? So that, to be honest, i have been very surprised this time. Um, the others, uh, learning curves, uh, again it could be a full choice question, it has been, more likely it'll be um, one bit of a bigger one, 
But regardless, um, it can ask learning curves. It has actually been quite a while since it was asked. Uh, two of you, three of you, I think, have heard of it. One of you might not have done. And neither might somebody else, but she's not here to know. Uh, <coughs> the third one is, you call it various things, but he calls it risk and uncertainty. Which again was an examiner at F5. I'll come to it later. I'm not going to try and explain now. Uh, there is a tiny bit extra that can be asked at P5, which I'll deal with. Well, I'll deal with the whole thing. Uh, that actually, um, I think, could be quite important. Things he's been saying about what's going to happen in the future. He's made it clear. He regards that as uh, pretty important. Uh, but again, that can be asked. It has been. Uh, usually when it's been asked, it's been one of the choice questions. But even so, I mean, 20 marks is substantial. Or occasionally a small bit of um, one of the compulsory. And finally, the only other one that's ever been or is ever likely to be asked is transfer pricing. Uh, and so, I mean, anything's a gamble, but uh, it would be ridiculous. As I say, I could spend two days going through everything, but apart from those four, the chances of anything else are almost impossible. Okay? However, the second reason I'd be cheating you if we just spent the whole day learning um, the techniques is although any of those four can be thrown in and have been thrown in and might be in December, most of the numbers question, and one of the two compulsory will be predominantly numbers, most of it, <clears throat> as you're about to see, doesn't rely on any techniques at all. Um, it's really, well, effectively it's prepare a budget. Almost every single exam, there's been a substantial number of marks where he's given you loads of information. Uh, one of the problems has been just reading it, you know, the time it takes and sorting it out. Uh, but where it's preparing a budget profit statement, a budget income statement, where you've not needed really any techniques at all. The arithmetic's been easy. The examiner's not arithmetical at all. The arithmetic's been easy. It's not been a learning thing. But where the problem has been... Um, He's cut it down a lot. In the past, there'd be as much as three pages of information. That won't happen now, but even so, there can certainly be one or two pages. Where the problem has been much more sorting out what he wants and what the information is, but the actual doing of it, um, well, you'll see what I mean in a minute, it's something you can't really learn. It's a combination of careful reading and uh, being fast on your calculator. But I hope by now we all are, and that's something I can't teach. <laughs> if you've got big fingers, get a big calculator sort of thing. Um, however, um, what I'm trying to get at is it would be easy for me to give you a wrong impression just to do nothing but teach all the areas. Might make people feel confident, but then you're going to get a shock. And so before we start going through any techniques, let me show you exactly what I mean. I can talk and talk and get nowhere. Um, this, I'm going to give you a question. There's a, another, uh, well, there's a couple of good ones at the back of the notes as well, which I'll tell you later. But this question I'm going to give you is actually from last time's exam. I said yesterday, with most papers, if it came up last time, you know, forget it for this time. But um, this compulsory question where a big part of it's preparing a budget, it's every single time. Uh... I say it was last time, it was a, a perfectly standard one. There's every reason to think the same sort of thing this time. So, let me give it you. I just want to say a few words, but then let's see how we get on with it. Um, it's two sides. Um, they're not completely independent, but uh, look at the required part A. In a minute I will shut up, and clearly there is a reasonable amount to read. It takes time to sort it out. But it says A... Prepare a statement showing the budgeted net profit or loss for the year ended 31st of May 2011. It's over and over and over again. And 
Uh, I really, I'll be astonished if there's any sort of technique problem in this. The problem is just sorting out the figures and being efficient. Uh, the only thing I would say before you have a go is appreciate it's not a financial accounts exam. You know, think about what you're doing. Uh, you've all done, I know, and don't be offended here, I know you've all done loads of exams. But, uh, in this sort of question in P5, it matters more than ever that you careful how you set things out. Not in terms of having pretty layout, but because there's so much information there, inevitably in the exam, you're going to make all sorts of uh, silly mistakes or misread, you know. But like always, if it's clear what you're doing, you'll get the marks. There is that danger of figures flying all over the place and nobody can sort out what's happening. All right? Uh, anyway, what I want you to do, I'm not going to say any more, see how you get on. As fast as you can, can you prepare this statement? It's only seven marks. I'll do it on the screen, so by all means, check as you go along, shout if you need help, if something's not clear. Uh, and can you then be having a go at PB part one, which upset quite a few people? Okay? Let's see how efficient we can be. This one doesn't take one Each horse is available for four lessons oh, a day. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so I'm not bring that in, sorry. <laughs>
Uh, could I interrupt for a second, please? I'm sorry, but I think everybody's... Hello? I'm sorry. I'll let you carry on in a minute. Uh, but I think everybody's uh, uh, finished or nearly finished uh, part A. And... Hello? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll leave it on the screen, so if anybody's gone wrong anywhere, I'm not going to talk through every single figure. That would be, I think, unnecessary. But I hope you'd all agree, I hope you all see the problem, that I'm sorry that, but, ah, um, in terms of technique, none of that is learning. I, really, I, I think you've got to agree that the arithmetic involved there is easy. Yeah? But I equally, I, I, I think you'd all agree that A, especially in the middle of an exam, I mean, you're all doing it quick here, but in the middle of an exam, A, that's a push for seven marks. Although, as you'll see, when you come to part B, um, it relates to it and you've already, did, you know, all the reading times, not needed again, sort of thing. But it is a push for seven marks and, and this isn't unusual, it's over and over and over again. 
this idea of different categories of student or different categories of lessons and things. Um, the trouble is, there is a lot to read. And, I think you'd agree, especially in the middle of an exam, the main cause of going wrong there is simply misreading. But you see what I meant earlier about not learning. You know, I could spend all day, but I can't teach that. Uh, well, sorry, I mean, obviously, I'm not being rude. If anybody's missed one bit, ask me. But it's not really a learning thing. It's much more just getting used to the style. And again, I think you'd agree, because it, it's the same idea, keep, it keeps getting repeated. You know, um, obviously, when you, as you do more, you get faster at what to look for, you know, and the tricks that come in. Yeah? You know, silly things like... Uh, the revenue for the riding school, he's putting prices up 10%, but it was only two of them. You know, I don't know if anybody did, but in the exam, I, 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 you know, there's no question, a lot of people will have put them all up at 10%, but that's just reading too fast and so on. All right? But you'll see the point I was trying to make. You know, I can teach and teach and teach, but I can't teach that, but that... Is, is, is the major problem, certainly, uh, in the compulsory question. Okay? Here it's only seven marks. On plenty of occasions it's been far more than seven marks. Alright, it's been longer, but it's been the same sort of problem. Alright?